Electronic session super close. Might even get ahead of this. Flashbang. Is it going to be coming over the top? It does. They beat it out. Well played from Cloud9. Just little poke and prod. Now Wildcard needs to go searching for info. Sonic pushing in towards water, but at the same time, look, Hobbit's got all of Connector. The bomb's now regrouped with Perfecto, who took that space, and Electronic confirms that Wildcard had gone looking. It's a force to play up towards A, and Electronic just keeps on going, takes down the Wildcard coach. That's a huge kill. That's going to keep Wildcard rooted at B. Well, the actual hit's coming to A. They're going to start to scramble, but Slight has to fall back. Electronic is going to be in the back lines. They're not even going to be aware of it, but Slight has hit the shot onto Axile. Oh, now they're going backwards again. And all the pressure is on Modem. In short, looking for this one player, gets the first. Rubich tries to get past him. Hobbit, a very quick trade. The electronics already in your back lines. Gets his kill before he's traded out. And now that's Perfecto flanking, and Hobbit needs to run up. Has it got time to do I this? I think so, maybe? It's close. Four, five, four, just enough time. Wow. Half a second, but the bomb gets planted. It's a lot of indecision from Cloud9. And now Sonic needs to clutch up. It's going to be really difficult to try and dislodge these members now they're set up into a crossfire. No utility, so he's just going to have to fight. Completely raw. Up the top of bank. No kit. Needs to move quite quickly, but Hobbit can take the contact towards truck, and that allows Perfecto to swing from default. Sonic not being given an inch. And Cloud9 take a mile. And in fact, probably run a couple of them, just rotating back and forth along those bomb sites. Eventually, get it over the line. But that had a lot of tripwires thrown in by Wildcard. And Cloud9 nearly fall over all of them. Yeah, that was very troublesome for Cloud9. Especially when the bomb goes down here. Hobbit gets a really, really nice trade kill. Then, yeah, 19 seconds. You pick up the bomb as soon as Electronic falls. Oh, flanks on flanks. A very oh, hello. Zeus is out, moving it up and down in his hands. A double Zeus. Sonic looking to be lightning fast, but maybe Axile will just spray them all down. When we see any Zeus action, maybe. Over the top? No. Denied. Now it's all under slight. And I don't think he'll get a chance to use his either. Cloud9, no issues. I respect the fact that Sonic went back to it anyway. <laughs> he was full blind. He pulls out the Zeus. Tries to grab the, the freebie on the Mac 10, but it just doesn't happen. But that's your eco. You're not worried about that if you're wildcard. Now you've kind of got everything at your disposal. You've got utility as well to support these rifles. Only a single Mac 10. Yet again, Cloud9 future proof in their investment. So the buy is not much far behind all the trinkets that Wildcard have brought forward in round three. It doesn't quite connect. And yet again, it's a change of pace for Cloud9. Very fast in towards short. Boost over the top. Sonic looking, but he will not find Electronic. I wonder if Electronic will find him. No, Electronic's maybe going to spot one here. All the way around the corner. Is that boost going to get him? No, it's disassembled. AG doesn't do exactly what he wanted, but then we have it with the opening. Meanwhile, the rest of the squad is taking space on A. Long control established. Stan ducked in the corner. Boomage tries to clear. Stan gets the kill, a re-smoke on divider to bail him out. This entire time, Electronic's been left and short. So Cloud9 has still got that option if they want to reset. It all depends on what Electronic can hear. As Wildcard try and reset themselves, a flash out in towards short, allows him to scale connector. It's going to be this A commitment. And Wildcard are onto this. They know exactly what's going on. The difficulty you've got for the defense is there's only a couple of flashes to hold Cloud9 back. Smokes, mollies, brain into the site. Slight still has sightlines, but can't connect onto Hobbit. 
Sonic tries to slip through, but Perfecto overwhelms and Stan, frustrated he can't get involved. Utility making it difficult for Wildcard to find comfortable places to fight, and they are overwhelmed just by the sheer pressure. They've got to fall back, haven't they? They've got to save and bring forward the Galil, bring forward the A1S, but it looks like Electronic isn't really having any of that already. Out monster, Motum blindsided. Suddenly Stan is already feeling the resistance from Cloud9. A spray through short. That's been communicated. Electronic and Axile now know exactly where Stan is. He's trapped in the corner. You don't want to be in that position with Electronic. No guns saved. A very clean round from Cloud9. Making the most of punishing the aggression that Wildcard set forward. And it felt like they were in the right position, Wildcard. It, they just didn't have the utility to stave off the, the pressure. Cloud9 are leaving these rounds really late. If they hold a couple of pieces of utility extra, that could go a long way. Have we started as a two side? At the half by an Axile. He's fast. Oh, nice little run boost. Unfortunately, no one in short. And I like the attempt. God, I love a little poke out monster. Axile had a look in, falls back immediately, seeing if he can bait out any sort of response. Mogot have some control with this double short play. And I don't really know what the setup is, but they're just going to slowly take this control. Stan is stuck in the connector and no. dealt with the double flames. Too much to handle. That's brutal. You get mollied from the bottom of Khan and then Boomage steps in and throws one down on top of you. You're restricted. You can't do anything. And Cloud9 know that they've not set a foot in towards short, so they're concerned that players could be here. Perfecto. As his due diligence spray is a little bit labored, and in fact, Paul V is able to drop the bomb. The issue you've got is players have fallen all the way around him. Hobbit just opens Con, finds the trade, and now Sonic, who did find a kill earlier in the round to Electronic, now needs to find more. Just the Deagle, though, you know, Armour didn't pick up that weapon from the kill. Oh, nice shot. Oh my god, Sonic. He's made this doable. Two quick digs, giving him the chance of the one on one. Hobbit has everything to work with. An opportunity appears for Sonic ahead. Hobbit eludes 5 HP, but just one target. A single shot from Sonic would get it done, but he is denied by Hobbit. Heroic attempt, but only the two. What a fantastic collection of shots, though, from Sonic. Makes that one really winnable. And he's given opportunities as well. As Hobbit more than keen to fight him. Really nice shots from Sonic all the way through. It's just not enough. And that's the closest that Wildcard have come so far in this map. A second one onto Boomich. It's just absurd. And that should give them confidence. That should give Sonic a little bit of belief. Orps out for Slight. Not only for Slight, Sonic's grab one too. All right. Often a secondary offer. Run boosted over Monster. Feeling emboldened after his digs to continue clicking. Might get the opportunity. Electronic is ready for it, but oh, it's just the tag through the edge. Modem's at least there to swing through for the response, and you're not ready for that second orb in play. Great opening kills for Wildcard. Now it's about holding on. You can see that Slight's immediately retreated because Motum's got all the space out monster. If he keeps pushing, he's going to find the bomb. Standing towards toilets, this is the next one. He needs to be really careful, not aware that Perfecto's just behind the tree. But Motum has got full control of this round, surely. Stan swings perfectly set up by the flashbang as well. Axile left out long. They know exactly where he is, wildcard. Yeah, this is looking like the first for wildcard. Axile, even if he can get past this first player, has to get the bomb and then get to a bomb site. So I think he knows... It's not happening. Hold to see if they push. Maybe save the AWP at the end. That's probably worthwhile. They've not got any loss bonus. So him saving with that is definitely worth it. 
That's a great round from Wildcard. They they realize that the way Cloud9 are approaching this T side, it's very contact heavy. This has always been a criticism of this team is, oh, hold up. Yeah, it, it's very common that they'll just go for the kind of contact plays um, and that's been punished here. He, immediately the run boost over. Bottom's there for the trade, so Electronic can't get away. And then they go for another contact play out towards long. Sonic not flashed off. Able, oh, sorry, Slight not flashed off. He can just hit his shot. Mark hard. Get on the board. And it's also just about the element of calculated risk from Wildcard. Something that they have to do in this map. The fact that Moton pushes. And it is still mitigated by the fact that when Stan feels the pressure, he gets flashed over at long. Doing things assertively are wild card in this round. They just need to be able to make it consistent, string some of them together. They're feeling the pressure. And Cloud9, they're not going to respect the utility. They're through Monster immediately. Flashbangs rain over the top. Orvi can't see a thing, and he's still able to take one to the grave with him. Moton now steps up at short ahead of this barrel's molly, but the audio gives it away on the jump. Must be very wary, but Axel can't find him. And Slight also steps in from CT. Everyone is covering for Wildcard and they're able just to shut down B. That's great defense. Just the layering of the various pieces. The fact that they had just always had that covering fire despite Modem getting a little bit caught out there. He makes the sound cue and he can't escape. Wins his fight and just tucks down because he's got the support. It's insane that Jorge gets that first kill, by the way. I think the flashbang was fantastic to, to set him up. You can see half the team was blinded around him. And Slight with the double. Again, that rotation there to support Wildcard with two consecutive have broken Cloud9. This is what we wanted to see. Much better. Oh. Probably just didn't see anything there. It was just uh, blind fire instead. Gets met with resistance from the M4. Moton will finish the job. And if you're Cloud9, I feel like you all almost just want to take the sting out of what's happening so far. You can use rounds like this to sort of assess, kind of get quite loud on the mic and just talk about what's happening. You've gone for an execute play and it's been shut down, but you've noticed a lot of players from Wildcard rotated almost immediately. Wonder if it's time to sort of change the the way you're approaching. You did mention the contact play. If they add a sprinkling of utility, suddenly hard card not might might not feel so comfortable in the positions they occupy themselves in. Slight and Stan are in such a powerful position right now. AK takes contact, and in fact, AK potentially just takes the whole lot. Slight not even needed. Perfecto, last player standing. Not much to be done. Stan with a three piece, confident building for him as well. As it does look like he is going to be pairing up with um, with Slight on A. At least he started there quite a few times. So you want him to be to be fired up and feeling confident. So nice for UK frags. Arcade not fumbling against the pistols. Gonna bring this within one. Already the best performance from Arcade on any of their maps here in Chengdu. I think that's going to light that fire, which is what they've been needing. Yeah, just uh, a little spark. Let's get the gears turning and the ball rolling. Slight, not going for anything aggressive, just drop some molly in connector. But that allows and facilitates Motum to slide in towards short tunnel. With the smoking monster as well, Electronic, obviously has been poking and prodding. Is it going to be looking over at that area of the map and they're hoping that he would peek over towards the short side. Nothing doing so far. Electronic stays concealed. Until Motum gives it a swing. And that's the first kill. I was worried about that position from Electronic. Slides all ready. Sonic has slipped in. They have two supporting rifles around this orb. How do you challenge it? How do you get it off the line? Sonic goes forward, he drops the bomb. And you've still got this orphan play. You've still got Stan on the other side of the smoke. And Stan activates. Wildcard is suffocating Cloud9. A shocking turn of events. Axar looking to make a hero play, walking through smokes. Electronic still very low from the early engagement. Axar's not done. He might be very shortly though. Stan with another. 
Top of the board for Stab. Electronics not getting involved at all. That's a really good round from Wildcard. It's the fact you've got that layering in towards the, the toilets, but off the back of that, it's as soon as Slight takes the contact, Sonic moves forward, trying to upset Cloud9 and trying to get ahead of the fact that they're now going to double peek onto that orb. Able to deny them at the first instance, and then Stan, he swings from Divider and is able to catch another player. And they have to make plays like this. They have to fight forward because they lost Motum early over towards Short. They can't allow Cloud9 to rotate away because they've got limited information on B. This is a really good hold. And as soon as that bomb is dropped, Wildcard just pounce. It's therefore just irrecoverable for, for Cloud9 to stake a claim back into that round. Four rounds each. Yet again, economy's broken. Cloud9 has not been able to plant for a number of rounds now. Yeah, I think I, what I really liked for that for Wildcard is they didn't get panicked when they lost the player in short. Yeah. They, they kept their composure and kept their setup on A. Would have been very easy for them to, you know, lose that player in B short and feel like they have to rotate extra elements down and that would have given Cloud9 the space. And Cloud9 thought that's what was going to happen. I thought that was going to be the response. This time they have been granted control of bathrooms. Sight boost for Stan, not going to spot anybody. Slides all, there is a well where you can get overwhelmed by the pistols. There's a fair bit of utility for Cloud9 to set up a pounce onto the A-bomb site. It's Hobbit up close. He's on the, the left-hand side of Slight, and Slight's only going to be jiggling the right side. He needs to go wide to clear it. So now, whilst the pressure is moving forward, that's where Hobbit can slip in, exactly like that. And Electronic with the AK deals with Sonic. That's the bomb site open. Very difficult to retake with the recovered orb, with Electronic's rifle as well in play. The flank's being held. Hobbit's taking a very aggressive line with this AWP. She doesn't mean if a wide swing comes through, he can't get away. That's not even a wide swing. It's just maybe a bit of angle mismanagement. Gives it a three on three. And with that, Wildcard are definitely interested. Stan looked like he was backing off, but now he can start to flank. Perfecto on track. Ready for them to fight into him. There's a lack of utility. That's the big issue. With Electronic dropping Hall Bay and the double up on a modem. Stan's flank might come through, but he can't win the round. And the pistols overwhelm. Yeah, good. Good setup there from, from Cloud9. The, the fact that Slight did give Long a look in, but not ready because Hobbit hit the timing where he was playing to the close wall was everything. And even though the bomb goes first, it doesn't matter because you're creating the scaling both up Long and Toilet. And from there, they, because Cloud9 are fanning out their players wide, it's so difficult to try and contain them in such close proximity with that sniper and with Sonic with the rifle. He gets domed instantly. And from there, Slight is completely alone. That's a sucker punch for Wildcard as they were starting to build momentum. But they can't let that upset them. And look at this, a triple push in towards the fountain. They're grabbing control really early. Yes, yeah, it's become a, a common maneuver on Overpass, but one that Wildcard have been yet to pull out. They're getting very aggressive. They've walked past Boomage. He's not aware. Almost gets one, but... They were ready for that fade. Perfecto has to fall back, and he does get the kill. HE over the top finds a follow-up. The aggressive maneuver, it looked good for a moment, but maybe they overstepped their mark. The good thing about this is this will probably force Cloud9 into a B play, and you've got Horvy and Stan that are now taking a, a little bit of liberty. One towards barrels, one by the pillar. In fact, Stan goes close. But Cloud9 are aware. They've got a lot of experience here, and you can see that these this utility set is designed just to keep Wildcard over on this side of the map while space was already being taken back by Hobbit through Fountain. And Sonic needs to hold on completely alone. This is a very good angle to try and catch Cloud9 off guard, but he hasn't really got the health to work with. Even spamming it. I think they're expecting potentially presence. Still gets his first kill, but the follow-up flash is perfect. And even if it hadn't been, there was Hobbit coming through long, which would have been able to deal with him. I think in a two on three, with the money where it is, 
They want to hold on to these rifles to give it another shot into the follow-up round. So Cloud9 will get their six on the board. But I do really like the way Wildcard approached the round. It was just the, the extra step. Perfecto slipping through, and I'm not sure where the HE kill came in, but that was also uh, a bit unfortunate. I'm not sure if we can get the, the replay back on that, because I we were focused on Perfecto at the time. I'd be very curious where that kill came in from. I think it was over towards Monster, just looking at the X's on the mini-map, but I, I feel like Wildcard made the play perfectly, and then it's just a case of overstaying your welcome a little bit. Yeah, it looked like, because it was slight falling. Oh, yeah. See, so yeah, I think it was at Monster. I like this though. This is exactly what we asked for out of Wildcard, and this is exactly what we're getting. Hobbit has not gone for an AK, instead he's gone for a MAC-10. This is really indicative of a faster play. It's yet again Cloud9 trying to test this B defense. Fully blind is everyone on this site. Hobbit spraying wildly, but it's slight to open up first. And then two players in water. It's something that Cloud9 didn't account for. Sonic doing everything to keep Wildcard afloat in this B-bomb site will finally fall at the hands of Perfecto. And with a minute and a half to work with, it's getting a little bit cheeky with it. Edges the smoke. Knows the players were out towards short. I think you should have to read the both of there because they know Sly got a kill and he knows Stan's a B player. That's surely being combed over. He's pausing to see if he can catch a rotation. Oh, he's going to get it. He might get more than he bargained for both. We'll slip through, but perfecto. Jiggling between the two angles. Misses the opportunity. Slight scopes on the angle and wildcard. They hold down B. Yeah, really good hold as well. The, the double up in towards water. And I think what's really good about this play is that Horvey understands that Sonic is going to be the MVP. He's the one that strafes out wide, allows Sonic to tuck in, get the reload off. And from there, he's able to reposition. They double down in towards water and they double up when it comes to the kill count. They're keeping this really competitive here, Wildcard. This is a much better showing for them on this CT half. Stan is limited with utility, but that won't be the end of the world. They've got all the rifles in place. Slight. Now taking the peek. Doesn't see anything at the moment, but Boomich has already slipped the net. He's through playground and he might have a peek at party. Yeah, I think with the information, surely... Oh, Hobbit with an opener. That's going to give Electronic the impetus to continue. Locks from barrels, good flashbang. Flames come forward, oh, he's burning. The smoke doesn't extinguish, he gets away with one HP. Hang on, this is interesting. Oh, Boomich has seen Stan, and he collects. Slight really wants to trade, but he can't manage it. That will force him off the line. Hobbit can't pick up the pieces. So Slight's been given another opportunity, and he will collect on Hobbit as well. It has to be Slight. Look at the health points of his two teammates. There's three HTP between them. Slight has to do everything. Drops the defensive smoke, moves to bank. And you feel that maybe he can set up his teammate with a flash or a peek for info. But he has to get on the line. He can't allow them into the bomb site. Once they're in, there's really no way for him to fight forward. There's no utility, no kit. He knows that he has to stop them before they get to the target. And he is going to be ahead of it. Behind dice. Ready for this entry in long flashbangs on over. And it forces the bait out shot from him. And he's stuck behind. Perfecto lines them up. Slight couldn't get away. Had the right idea. With one HP on Horvay. This is a seventh for Cloud9. All the most spectacular clutch you've ever seen from a coach stand in. I fear it's most likely the former. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. That's one. Equal to his health. But they're not going to be giving him any easy fights. There'll be a quick swing if needed. And it's Electronic who puts the nail in the coffin. 7-5 for Cloud9 on the T side of Overpass.
future pros, offense can be the best defense. So let's look at an offensive CT side incendiary for sure. To throw this incendiary, stand back at the wall here on the right. Aim above the second window and throw the incendiary while running. This will incendiary off the pipe leading to short water. You can use this to delay or take the space. That choice is yours. His troubles. There they go. Flash. Forced away. This was some of the problems that FlyQuest encountered in the regulation at the start. Was this pressure from Flit on to be early? Dexter throws out the smoke, plays in the off angle so as to not go down to any preemptive spray. Five on five with 50 seconds. They're staring at the smokes. Inza's come over and donated some util. He's been told to get on it. Oh, spotted, Ooh. spotted. I don't think Vexite caught the whiff the other way. Forced to respect the util. He's got a nade as well. 30 seconds. They're going to finish B. This is going to be on Vexite. He's playing anti. Good nade damage. Flit's really the walking wounded at 29. Here comes the util. Here comes the exec. Flustered is Jane dropping his nades. And a bit more than that. Spam. Empty handed Dexter. But there's something from Vexite. It needed to be more. Ins what you got for us. Nothing on his smoke spam. Alistair and Liaz, a country mile away. A redeploy of a smoke available, make it to Mir and Fame. Both with walls to erect. Oh, you're just smoked out. Alistair could land some good utility, but still, you're going to have to wait quite a while. This Wildcard got to be feeling pretty good. This is the best map they've performed in so far. 7-5, only slightly trailing Cloud9, but it's Cloud9 that now stand on the defense, a half that they are very comfortable in. And, and this is where the real challenge begins for Wildcard. They've still got a shot. They've been taking risks. It's been looking and, and feeling a lot better from the boys in black and red. Get a pistol. Suddenly, momentum swings your way, and that's what they need to thrive off. Yeah, we definitely saw some of the, the best stuff out of Wildcard so far in Chengdu on this map. So I'm not going to ride them off yet, and if they can get the pistol going. The economy management, that's going to be key on this T side, keeping Cloud9 humble. Got a set of util for an execute wherever they wish to go. And it's a four player lean to B for C9 with Axile on spotter duty. You've seen a couple of players. He backs off just a little bit and needs the support of Boom. And he will get it. Wildcard took space initially over towards long, and in fact, they're just going to keep committing off the back of it. This is going to be a very fast execute on towards A. Image Naxile going to be needed. A smoke forward is actually kind of devastating, although Glocks can very easily run through if they wish, especially off the reload. Axile blinded, forced, and flustered, but it doesn't matter. Boomer just found the double. Hobbit rotates very quickly, and it's onto Sonic, who's been a god with the pistols. He's been given some space, but only for a moment. A re-aggress, but he moves into bank. This is where he could get tricky with it. Cloud9 double up. Making sure that even if Sonic finds that first kill, then a trade can be immediate. Sonic's paused, and if you're Cloud9, you know there's two places he could have gone. Bank or long. The longer he pauses, the more of a question mark that poses. Difficulty is, how does he get out of bank? Now he's spotted. His options become more limited. Time worn down. Pathing through. And there's Hobbit holding if he did want to bail to B. Which technically he could. He tries to fake it out. He's getting tricky with it, but Cloud9 are falling for none of his ruses. Can't pull the wall over their eyes. 
And eventually, time will be an issue. Oh, this is brutal. That is so brutal. He dies after time. $400 to his name. That's salt in the wound, but that is expertly played by Cloud9. The fact that they both fall away from the smokes initially over towards Dumpster and, and reset themselves whilst Electronic is working his way on the flank. Electronic's also quiet, so you can hear audio just in case Sonic has run away. So it had to be really loud about his retreat. So that gives them the idea that he's probably locked in towards that bank side. And from there, they're able to establish that crossfire. And the cherry on top is just denying Sonic money. He will still invest. We'll get a couple of flashbangs to help the gang out. As they make their move in towards Connector. But with Axile and Boomage just elevated in towards the top of Connector. Sends wildcards scampering down towards the bottom. There are so many MP9s in play to farm cash here. Yeah, the double flashbang makes sense. You know, you'd like a flashbang just to set up some sort of play, and given that. You know, he's going to be the one that's already super hurt. May as well be him that cops the blow here so everyone else gets a bit better buy into the next round. I guess the, the main reason it hurts is that Sonic has been such a, a solid contributor, but I guess with the Deagle in yeah. the next round, wouldn't count him out. He's hit some absolute slammers with the hand cannon. Very delayed on this hit. Perfecto might get ahead of it, but things better. Doesn't want to walk into a crossfire, which there is set up with the Glocks. And now the flash play. It's a short pop. Electronic looking to be overwhelmed. Perfecto deals with his target. And Electronic without head armor. Does drop. So it's two kills, but no chance for the bomb plant. And that's nice as well. Hobbit just throws back the, the M4 up heaven, so one MP9 can be upgraded into another rifle, so that they only lose MP9s off the back of that Cloud9, which is best case scenario. Important that Hobbit gets these two kills here because it sets Electronic up to be able to only be delegating one angle from him rather than also looking at Monster. Otherwise, the timing of that rotation could have got a, a little bit spoiled for Cloud9. But not to be the case, they take 30 seconds to breathe. They know this is the investment from Wildcard, and they don't want any funny business here. Groove telling his players, look, we, we don't want to give Wildcard any opportunities to try and build back into this game. Sure, they've looked good on the CT side, but if you're Cloud9, you just kind of want this game to be over and done with. You do not want to give chances. You do not want to give opportunities to this team. A stark difference on the other side where I guess you can really notice the, the, the lack of coach, right? The reason Wildcard don't need to pause so much is because the coach has already sat with them. Is that last second substitute? <laughs> yeah, he's given some reassurance to the team. Bit of motivation as they get underway. The MP9 is still in play. It's the bonus for Cloud9, AKs, and there's that Deagle for Sonic. Like if you're Cloud9, you're also just saying in that 30 seconds the likelihood of Slight having an AWP is incredibly minimal. Axar remains on the SMG, just post out towards Long Toilets. A lot of smokes being used from Wildcard to cover off toilets. It's a little bit of a miscom, but it's fine. I want to fight out towards Long instead. This will leave them uh, pretty hard pressed when they go for an execute. Yeah, it's going to have to be contact with this kill. Axile, oh, the flashbang from Boomage was perfect. Almost a double. How did how did Sonic live that and Motum didn't? Yeah. That's brutal. That happens to, I feel like that happens all the time when you're playing. It's always, the, you know, you're the one behind <laughs> and you're the one that dies. But with that kill out towards Long Let's and the information... Well, Carl can, can rotate, and it's going to keep this 2-2 split in play. I wonder when Cloud9 will go search for information. It will probably happen in the next couple of seconds or so. And in fact, Perfecto's rotated away. He's gone up towards A, so Cloud9... It's, it's just so they can throw a flash. So Boomich goes back, and he clears Divider. Doesn't catch a whiff, but they remain in there for the time being. Hobbit... We'll reposition. 20 seconds left. Electronic is left alone here with an MP9, a wild card, a coming out monster. Oh, but from the top, doing a lot of damage, but he's deleted. And Electronic can't get it done. Stan has breached the bombsite. Perfecto required to step up. 
Bomb feet planted. Sonic is still low, but has a headshot angle. Boomage, rotating through short, has the kit. There's a lack of utility. They love a HE or a Molotov. Either would be Sonic's undoing, but instead, they just have to fight forward. And they have done so into the first. Sonic peeks up and Slight can't get it done. Boomage, brute forcing his way into B. And the retake will be successful for Cloud9. Yeah, that's a, a little bit unfortunate there for, for Wildcard because Stan, his position, he feels like he's trapped because the initial spray from Heaven and the swing from Perfecto out towards CT, it's really difficult to, to kind of relocate. He felt very committed. And as soon as he loses that aim fight with Boomich, it feels like one of Sonic or Slight should be swinging to try and guarantee the trade. And the issue you've got is that they both swing on different players at the same time. So you're giving over these one-on-one -on -one fights. Cloud9 being now offered up double the score lead of wildcard. Ollies go forward, economy finally broken for this T side and nades are doing a lot of damage. It's a familiar sinking feeling as to yesterday for wildcard. The difference is you lose this one, it's all over. Elimination series between these two teams. Hope's not done for wildcard. Certainly gets a little bit more dire, especially with three players brought so low with these pistols. You kind of wanted just to brute force into B, but the sprays can be too easy. They're so low, Perfecto doesn't even need to see them. There's no issues against the Tech Nines. Yeah, this is uh, Cloud9 now entering flow state. Uh, they've overcome some difficult rounds. They were able to win out that retake in the previous. And from there, this B defense, it's very simple. Perfecto just standing ahead of the flashbangs. And then his spray just connects onto three of them. Electronic in close proximity just to close onto the short plate. B denied. Bounces. Perfecto and Electronic make it so. Now Axile. Even going a little bit aggressive by himself, just peeking in towards Fountain, aided by the utility. But no one's there really for wild cards. Slight had the AWP and brings it over towards Monster. They want to test Perfecto and Electronic once more. An additional re-smoke, and you've got two players. Anti-flash for Perfecto, but he's the one that falls first. They've managed to brute force their way in again. Hobbit, required to step up, slips into water. They're pushing on him. That smoke actually gives him a bit of coverage. Axel also rotates. Bombs be planted. Hobbit is still alive, still fighting, and still winning these duels. It's unreasonable. It feels Sonic is getting flashed behind Hobbit on an absolute tear. How has he stayed alive that long? And it's given the space for the rotations. That is map and series point for Cloud9. That's a disaster. And uh, that's really unfortunate for Wildcard. As you mentioned, that smoke trickled down and gave him cover allowed him just to position himself to the point where they had to go wide to clear him out. And that serves two purposes. As you can see that, look, <laughs> Motum got two kills for free because both Perfecto Electronic were anti-flash. But the fact that Hobbit burrows himself into the corner, it means that Wildcard have to go down in towards the depths to clear him out. They have to go wide in order just to see him. And that means that Cloud9 can rotate through Connector. It means they can also set up utility to support him. The fact he gets away with another kill there is unreasonable. But he's been lights out all series long. Boomish nearly with a collateral. The nade should finish the job. It doesn't. The second orc bullet will. It feels like the journey is running out for wildcard here in Shangdu. Five on three. At least they have short control. At least they've got the bomb. But with a molly and a smoke to work with and no flashes, they need to brute force their way into this round. There needs to be something magic from one of these remaining players. Stand the Sonic, definitely the two that I'd be looking at to do it at the moment. So there's the world. And it's Boomish. Gets aggressive. Is he going to be ready for this angle? No. Boomish caught off. Alert smoke moves forward onto the site. But Axile is still a disruptive force. Wildcard are incredibly spread. We'll be looking for a head. The coach. Coach's shoulders. Maybe that will be the way back in for Wildcard. A follow-up. He's found two. Puts it into even steading. Axile still a threat. They seem aware of the possibility. 
but I'm not sure they're going to be ready for him to be right here. Stan can't smoke off the cross, and he needs to. Needs to be a plant for Bank. He will get over the bomb to be planted. This is good. Stan actually going to go on top of default. He wants to try and remove Vaxile. Can he see him over the top of the Wisps? It's so close. Might be given a, a second opportunity. Silent drop now looks to long. Horvy still patrolling. Bank and he's finding even more damage. Electronic finally ends his killing reign. But where on earth has Stan got to? Needs to be cleared and Axile will find him. A really great attempt all off the back of the coach, but it's not to be. It's Cloud9 closing out the series in quick fashion. Where the favourites coming into it, and they looked exactly that on the opening map. But you've got to give props to Wildcard for the performance they showed on Overpass, where they were certainly not favoured. It was a really difficult map for them to be coming into with the double standing situation.